let's start with our class on harappan civilization now one of the most important civilizations of india and the most ancient civilization that we would discuss is harappa civilization to begin with what is civilization the word civilization comes from latin word civis which means one who resides in the town now of course harappan civilization is considered as the first evidence of urban planning and two important towns of the harappa civilization are harappa of course and mohenjodaro both of which are present in present day pakistan harappa was discovered in 1921 by dayaram sahani and mohenjodaro in 1922 following the next year by dr r d benerji now uh, when was the harappa civilization started or how old is the harappa civilization there have been different views pertaining to it for example sir john marshall when did the excavations believe that the harappan civilization is around 3250 to 2700 bc old however from the radiocarbon dating sources we have said that it is nearly 2500 to 1750 uh, bc old this is considered a period which is similar to the mesopotamian civilization and the egyptian civilization that means these civilizations were contemporary to one another however the mature phase of indus valley civilization from which most of the evidences are found are from 2200 to 2000 bc now as of now 250 centers have been identified <coughs> excuse me with harappa civilization which are seen in the regions of punjab sindh gujarat baluchistan Ut uttar pradesh uh, the parts of haryana in india so if we talk about the north south east west extension i can say in the north up to the region of ropar in the south up to the region of narda and tapti river in the east up to the region of meerut in present day up and in the west in uh, the regions of pa uh, pakistan the region of sukte gendor right now this is the extension that we have seen mohenjodaro the word literally means mound of dead so this was one of the chief capitals in the southern region harappa was a chief capital in the northern region so within the harappa civilization the northern region under the harappa and southern region under the mohenjodaro which were the major cities mohenjodaro is known for its well planned city layout for its well planned drainage system and sanitation system and uh, harappa is again considered on the similar lines but it is relatively bigger than mohenjodaro so here we do have the map with major cities and their locations now chandudhao chandudaro is one of the major cities uh, which is located in the region of sindh in the regions of gujarat we have dholavira and lothal then we have kalibangan in rajasthan banavali in haryana uh, rakhigir is another important site we do have sites like uh, banavali in haryana and then uh, alamgiri which is near in the regions of hastinapur uh, in uttar pradesh so those are some of the major sites and definitely harappa and mohenjodaro were the major two sites as we could see on the map and the other smaller towns have been mentioned another important thing is the luxuries were seen only in the major towns the smaller towns had more of utilitarian things so that was again an interesting phenomena now town planning was extremely important as you can see the city was divided into two sections citadel and the lower town lower town was also known as the town proper and this was at a relatively lower elevation citadel was at a higher elevation and this was home to three important things the public buildings the granaries and the religious structures and predominantly this was the area where the merchant the priest resided and this had a walled territory okay so this was the basic classic feature of a citadel now all the streets which were there in the uh, harappa and the mohenjodaro or the harappan civilization we could say followed a grid pattern the roads were crossing each other at 90 degrees when the houses were seen they were along the roads but on the turns there were curves so that the carts could move the horse carts the bullock carts could move smoothly on the turns the grids were either north south or east west in alignment uh, the doors and the windows opened at the street they knew a very good sense of privacy that means the ground floor did not had any doors or windows the doors and windows were present only at the 
first floor and also within the house there were uh, specifically the bathrooms the storeroom the kitchen the courtyard and most of the daily activities of the life happened in the courtyard the courtyard was in the center and a much open space and also if a person used to enter into the house they could not have a clear visibility of the courtyard at once and this was again one of the means to protect their privacy so those were some of the important features of town planning uh, giving them a sense of privacy uh, making sure uh, the engineering is at its marvel because even in the bathrooms it had the paved and the slanting floor to ensure that there is no seepage of the water in and around the house drains would empty into the stream uh, street drains and the drainage system was again one of the very classic drainage systems because all the house waste would be going into the street street drains as you can see the street drain in the figure it was so big that a person standing here could be seen and this was a common street drain which was seen the drain was made of mortar lime and gypsum on the top was the covering with bricks and stones and at regular interval there were manholes which were open for inspections as and when required that indicates that the people there had a good sense of health and sanitation the whole of the thing was well planned and it was constructed it carefully uh, within the town there were lamp posts at regular intervals uh, there were dustbins the concept of dustbin was there which indicates that they had a good sense again for sanitation health and hygiene uh, for the people traveling from in and around inns were present for staying at night which are called as sarais during the mughal period uh, so those those that concept was again there people were very very disciplined peace loving and therefore they did not encroach the land so they had the street run and the houses were not encroaching the street the land that was allocated to the house was there people would not go beyond that also a very interesting system of watch and ward was there at night which in, in which ensured that the city maintains security uh whatever pottery cleans were there they were away from the main city to ensure that the city's regular life is not disrupted and proper arrangement for water supply was done coming on to the art and craft some of the very important features one of which is the granaries so a uh, great granary is presented mohanjodaro the dimensions are given here 45 by 15 meter and the idea was to store the grains now even at harappa there were two rows of six granaries which were present there was a pillared hall present in mohanjodaro this was a assembly hall to carry any kind of businesses of the state and all trade uh used to take place at the pillared hall uh, similarly there was a great bath in mohanjodaro it was 55 meters by 35 meters and it had a swimming pool in the center which was 12 meters by 7 meters and this swimming pool around this there were rooms all around this swimming pool was fed by a well and the waste water went through a huge drain also close to it was hamman hamman is a region where hot air bath could be taken so the concept of hot air bath was also known besides this coming to the sculpture a very important sculpture a bronze dancing girl structure was present now this structure indicates that bronze was present during that time and bronze cast statues were made there was also a stone figure of a shawl uh, clad yogi yogi so yogi as a meditating posture was another important figure uh, dancing figures with right leg and left leg being raised in front were some other figures artistic figures were there uh, watch dogs young bulls animals crafted were some other sculptures and figures which were seen now carving was another important thing there were more than 2000 seals which have been identified from the harappan period the harappan script is not deciphered yet but it was pictographic nearly 250 to 400 pic pictographic letters were present and those were embarked on the seals these seals were made of pottery they were made of fence uh, they were made of ivory so across various things these seals were made and then pottery was another important aspect glazed pottery was again considered a marvel and one of the earliest examples from ancient world of glazed pottery was seen from harappan civilization also the pottery was named known for its color design shape and the finishing touch 
uh, we have seen that uh, black pottery was another uh, important aspect and the the samples have also been found in uh, the countries of mesopotamia which indicates that there was a cross border trade relations which existed the next is paintings paintings were also seen on earthen wares and uh, on utensils there is a one very interesting painting which has been seen from lothal this painting is very unique it says that on a tree like structure there is a crow like bird which is sitting which has a fish like structure in mouth and below the tree is a fox like animal with a open mouth expecting that this fish would fall in his mouth so those kind of depictions were also uh, there in the paintings giving it a very lively touch there were another forms of painting where uh, where a fisherman was carrying two fishing nets on their shoulders so those were some of the painting features which were present the script as we already said were engraved on the seals however they are not deciphered the script was pictographic with more than 2000 seals which could be of pottery ivory fans and stati statite which is a soft uh, uh, soft powder like substance uh, through which this material is made have the presence of seals one of the major seal is of shiva pashupati which has been found at mohanjodaro these seals told us about the knowledge that the common men and women had during that time that their dresses their ornaments their hair style also a seal of a women with an upside down position with legs spread apart and a plant rising from uh, the belly on the reverse side was a man with a sickle shaped knife and a woman sitting on the ground with hands raised in supplication was another example now some of the historians have said that this is considered as a figure of human sacrifice to mother goddess so those were kind of beliefs which existed during that time when it comes to religion the most popular religion as we could see from the the excavations is mother goddess or shakti the divine mother which was worshipped and it was considered that female energy is the source of all creation now this female energy as the source of all creation was worshipped in various forms the structure of shakti was such that that the head was dressed with a fan like structure uh, ornaments were being worn and uh, sometimes on on the bifurcated branches of people tree uh, the the goddess was standing and some cases we also see goat being brought in front of mother shakti as a sacrifice uh, some of the figures are smoke stained that means people used to have lot of incense sticks or oils uh, being burnt in front of the uh, statues and therefore indicate that there was worship in some form or the other however one very important thing to note is none of the evidences show the presence of temples that means worship of the figures were done worship of the deities were done but not in the temples unlike the sumerians which were the mesopotamians uh, there was a temple and the city was built in a circular fashion around temple unlike that Harappa the city was in a cross grid fresh fashion with no temple as the center of the city and citadel and the lower town as two separate sections now another important structure uh, in the religion uh, the the figure in the religion was lord shiva seated on a raised platform with cross legged position in a yogic posture and the uh, eye sight being fixed onto the nose uh, the three faces and the uh, a head being adorned with trishul surrounded by animals so shiva pashupati as a classic figure it was called as also worship of semi demi gods was done so shiva and shakti were considered as the major gods and then demi gods were worshiped during that time people tree was known as a abode of gods and people tree was again worshiped so the the figure of shakti that we talked about had bifurcating branches of people tree where shakti was present so that indicates people tree was considered auspicious a uh, bird which was considered uh, auspicious was dove bird uh, people the common people were afraid of demons and they had a huge faith in charms and amulets uh, which nowadays we believe as superstitious practices but that time yes people did have belief in that also there were numerous animals which were worshiped for example buffalo bull 
tiger, rhinoceros, crocodile, snakes. Now they were worshipped as deities, as uh, spirits of deities or as vehicles of God, we do not know. But in some form or other, these animals were worshipped and that was another important uh, practice. Cremation and burial practices were popular. Unlike the Egyptian civilization where lot of wealth and jewels were buried along with the dead, uh, that did not happen in the Harappan civilization. There was burial practices, but that burial had a lot of uh, pottery, some ornaments and mirror. The basic idea was there is life after birth, uh, life after death. And following that concept of life after death, uh, these burial practices were there. But all of these indicate, the practices of Shiva Shakti indicate that there existed an organic relationship between the Harappan civilization and the present day Hinduism of this time. The next important thing that we understand is the trade relations. So there were numerous trade relations with the outside world. The seals of Indus script, the Brahmani bulls uh, have been found in the Sumerian or the Mesopotamian areas. From the Sumerian sites, we do have statite vessels, modern ram. Uh, then we have adis and pottery rings which are seen. There were trade relations with Egypt and Crete through the region of Sumer or Mesopotamia and this could be seen from the seals. These seals had mastless ship with central cabin and a, a, a steerman seated at the rudder. So those indicated that yes, there were trade relations through the ocean as well. Also, Lothal was, was considered as one of the earliest dockyard which connected to the Sabarmati river. However, some historians do believe that Lothal was not big town and it was a relatively small town and this uh, dockyard was actually not a dockyard but an irrigation tank. So there were various views regarding the settlements and the establishments but yes, there existed trade relations, lapis lazuli was traded, we do have similar, uh, similar presence of copper within pottery and black glaze which, which was found in the pottery in the regions of Harappa and in the regions of Sumer. Uh, the next is how did, how did this civilization decline? Again, we do not have a concrete reason what happened and the reasons that led to the decline. But it is believed that at around 1750 BC, both Harappa and Mohanjadaro, the two major settlements, disappeared. Some cite that it was because of a flood. Others say there was an epidemic which broke out. Some say that climate change happened and rivers diverted their path. Others say there was a severe attack by the Aryans. And some believe that there was a severe earthquake in this reason, region. But overall, if we summarize this lecture, we understand that the people of Harappa were peace living. The Harappa civilization gives us a first indication of a classic urban planning. It gives a first indication of a well-planned sanitation system. A classic structure uh, as a first example of architecture done in stone and an engineering marvel we can say overall which had a numerous implication across the civilizations and a lot of information for us to give. So this was a quick summary and uh, understanding of the Harappan civilization. We'll be covering the other lectures of ICSC class 9th history. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.